Hey, Don, the auction professor. Um, I've got just a few things I picked out of several lots that I got. I got the usual records, so I'm going to show you just a few records. Um, I got some sheet music, some more postcards, a few books, um, just odds and ends. Um, and I thought I'd just kind of show you these. I just picked some oddball stuff out of the lot. Um, just to give you an idea on what I get, um, this is just a small portion of what we got in, in this week. Probably this week I've gotten another couple thousand records all together, I believe, somewhere in that range. That's counting 45s, LPs, and 78s. And then postcards, I got several thousand more postcards this week, too. Um, that was earlier in the week. I pulled out just a few just to kind of show you. Um, people keep asking what a folder postcard is, so I'm going to show you those and show you several different kinds and um, show you some toys and a few other things I got here. Uh, let's get rid of some of the bigger items I've got in the way here, too. This is a vintage color forms. Um, color forms don't go for a ton of money, but some of the oddball ones like this one, this one's like a psychedelic one. This one's like 15 or 20 bucks. That's what I got out of the last one. It's from 1962. Um, it's got most of it inside there. Um, so, you know, as long as it's mostly complete, if it's missing one or two items, it's not a huge ordeal. I sell the superhero ones all the time. I've got a couple Disney and maybe Winnie the Pooh in right now as well as this one. Again, they're not super quick movers, but Christmas time, these will always go. You know, I usually don't keep them on the shelf for more than, say, four or five months. And again, that's only, you know, 20, 25 cents to list. So don't worry about the time on oddball stuff like this. Um, let's get rid of some of the bigger items here, too. This is actually like an 1870s tin uh tea uh, can and you can actually still see that the word tea is actually on here with some company name that's worn off I don't know how well it shows up on the lighting here it's literally you can just kind of still see it in there um, hopefully you can but it's literally an old tin I've never seen one quite this shape it's a probably an industrially made one um, it doesn't look hand uh, soldered which some of these sometimes you can find handmade ones I paid a dollar for it because you couldn't even barely see the T on it something like this I'll probably get like 40 bucks for maybe even more I'm not really sure because of the T and this could date back earlier than I'm anticipating this could be like Civil War era for all I know um, but I'll be looking into this there's no way I wouldn't say it's worth at least 20 or 30 bucks no way just not gonna happen and then along that same line this is a solid copper funnel this would have been in a garage or something. And it looks to me on this one here that it's handmade totally. You can see the seam line here, seam line in the inside. This isn't something that would be hard to make on your own. Um, probably a person who made like hand makes these makes a ton of these at a time. Um, and this is old. This is probably 1800s as well, too, 1870s or so. I don't run across the brass ones very often, so if you see a brass or, or a copper one or anything along that line, I'd grab it. And again, this one was copper. There's, you know, a couple dollars just in copper in this thing. And it's pretty solid. It's pretty thick. Uh, it's a nice, neat item, even smashed up a little bit here and there in the dinged. Again, I paid a dollar or two, I think, for this. I, I usually buy them in big lots, and we'll throw out, so it's an estimate on what any individual item is. Um, I usually, again, pay like in a lump sum bundled lot, so that's just what I do. Um, but this is a good item. You know, this is like... Uh, this is like a folk art piece, I would say. You could put it there. You could put it in metalware, collectibles, um, car section. Uh, this would be more like the ones you put oil into a car or something. In fact, this could be a, a car version of it. I'm not even sure. But I can sh uh, surely tell you that this should sell for like 30 bucks again, maybe even more than that, because I really honestly don't see copper ones of these funnels. Um, that's with those. Um, I don't buy glass very often, and I've talked about it. I actually broke one of these just last night. I set it down, something slipped and clipped one of the uh, edges of the glass, so I kind of hurt the value on this myself. Um, I got a dollar into the set because it doesn't look like much, but these are mid-century. They're Holland. It's Holland wear, actually. They're nicely marked with a plate on the bottom over here. So, I mean, they're good items. Um, I, I just cracked one. My, my bad. I mean, the glass are pretty cool. Something you don't see these shape, but... We'll get rid of it, and off it goes. Uh, let's see here. Here's a paperweight. This isn't worth a lot of money. I saw one online. They go for like 5 or 10 bucks if I'm lucky. I'll probably honestly put seventeen fifty on it, uh, work with the title, and um, fix the title issues that the other one had, uh, the other person, and uh, I'm sure this will sell for like 10 or 15 It's got the box. It actually has... This is... Uh, Dollar, it's a company, Dollar Jarvis Corporation. But on this one here, this gentleman was celebrating his 80th birthday. It's the owner and founder of this, this big company. And he actually sent a hand-signed uh, letter. So I've got the owner of the major company's 
a signature on a letter with this. These people made foot lockers for the U.S. government during uh, World War II, so it's a good item, I think, and I think I should be able to sell it fairly well. This is from uh, 1952 as well. Nice box, the whole works. Um, I've talked about glasses too. Case is nothing, just junk, but it's the shape of the glasses. These octagonal ones I always sell, dirty or not. I'll clean this puppy up a little bit. Um, I haven't looked, but it's possible it's gold filled frame too, uh, or it's like a Bosch and Lom frame. Um, I can't quite make out the name. Um, I'll have to get a, a, a loop on here and take a better look at it. But some of these are worth some good money. I paid again a dollar for this here about. Um, I'll probably get 10, 15 bucks because of the shape. Maybe even more because it's literally got a, a like a chasing around the the lens. Something very odd. Something I've never seen. So pretty interesting uh, pair of glasses. And I've showed you another couple that I've had. Um, these octagonal ones I always sell. Always. So a dollar, two, even three bucks I probably have paid for that. Um, now this one here. This is a brass doorbell uh, plate that you could uh, replace for in front of your house. Um, it still has the tag from the nursery. This was sold at for 30 some odd bucks. Now I looked this up. I can sell this on Amazon or I can sell it on um, on uh, eBay. This sells all day long on eBay for like $32 a piece plus shipping. So good investment. I paid two bucks for this one here. Um, and I may put it on FBA. The only problems with this, there's no uh, barcode on it, you know, so I'd have to really do a little bit of searching on it. You know, I could probably just pop it up. I've, you know, I've got permission to sell in several categories that this could go in. So, you know, I may do that as well, too. Let's get rid of a big thing over here. I don't mess with a lot of the newer toys with their Star Trek. Uh, but this one I've had before. This is the Enterprise from, uh, I believe, First Contact. Um, just like these stands here. these I can get 5 or 10 for these stands. I paid 2 bucks for this. I put batteries in it. I've already taken them out, but it does still light up and work. And it's actually got the secondary cover, so you can replace where it mounts onto the stand if you just want to use it like as a toy. So otherwise, it just clips on here. It's got magnets in there. Um, it's in good condition. Nice stickers. Uh, for two dollars, this will go for like fifteen or twenty around Christmas. Um, I may put it up sooner. These still sell throughout the year. It's hit or miss on some of these. I can get almost as much for this out of the box as I can in the box, believe it or not. Just because people don't research enough when they're looking to buy something like this. It's a spur of the moment purchase for most people. Um, again, this is a good item. It comes apart. It's got all the pieces here. The magnets still work. The, the wiring still works. So these still light up as well too. On stuff like this, I don't usually buy them unless I know they work. Um, the person who had this, I know them. If it didn't work, I could have returned it, so I wasn't too worried. Good, good purchase there. Uh, let's see here. This is Small Soldiers. Now, I haven't had this size of it before. He actually works still. He needs cleaning up, but he still does work. I haven't put batteries in this. Just literally, I found him dirty and all. I'll clean him up. He was a dollar. Um, I'm not sure on what he's worth. I haven't had this one before, as I said. I've had all the little ones, the regular action figures, the six to nine inches. And um, this one here, though, is probably better than those, I would say. So I'm going to get at least 15 bucks, I would imagine. Still talking. I mean, this is Tommy Lee Jones from the movie. If you haven't seen Small Soldiers, it's actually a good kids' movie. Um, we've watched it with the kids, you know, when they were younger. So, And also, I've talked about in my, uh, my Tools of the Trade video on the screwdriver sets that I have. Now, let's say I wanted to do something to fix this. Um, something wasn't working, speaker was shot. You can replace the speakers in some of these yourself, believe it or not. I've taken and I save little speakers and things from other devices, and I do repair some of these. But this is the, the tube where the screws are in, and this has a triangular screw head in this. And that kit that I, I showed you in that video um, actually has one of those. So you can take stuff like this apart with a screwdriver, the, uh, the, the computer repairman screwdriver sets. So that's why I keep those screwdriver sets for just things like this if I want to clean it up or if I have to take it apart. Uh, let's see here. And again, I'm only showing you the oddball stuff. I got the usuals. I got a ton of postcards, as I said, records, the whole works. Um, this is a Liberty Bell bank, coin bank. Now, I've had the bank, but I've never had the box. Uh, just to show you, you will run across these. These date from the 50s or 60s. 
Um, and this one is the Edgerton State Bank Company. This is 1976 this bank was made. Still has everything in it, the tags, the papers, everything. Um, I got like 10 or 15 bucks for the last one, and the last one wasn't in perfect condition. This one is, it's like a local bank advertisement. You can sell this in, you know, the collectible section. But with the box, I'm looking at probably 20, 24 bucks I'd get out of this. Um, this was a dollar, so, you know, it's a good investment on something like this. Always with the box. I always buy those if they're a dollar or two. Most of these coin banks I sell. Um, I'll buy them sometimes a big lot at an auction, you know, 20, 30, 50 coin banks. This was a one-off this time. The typical, here's a couple of 8mm uh, movies. These are the kind you want to look for. Um, let's see here. Uh, this actually had um, uh, a vacation on it. It has information. It says it's from the, the 50s. And it actually lists German cities. So if this is from Germany from that time, and it shows the flights and the airports, and you know anything in, in Germany, like uh, the east and west uh, block, uh, the separation in the walls, this is going to go for some good money. You know, I got a dollar in each of these. I'll take a shot for a dollar on any one of these if it's full, if it's a full reel, and it has the metal case. The metal cases and the reels themselves, I should be able to get six or eight bucks for it with no film. And that's like 50 feet worth of film in there. So this is probably something, if it's got good content, I'll get 30, 40, 50, even 60 bucks for. And the same goes for this one here. Now, this one didn't have a paper, if I remember right. Uh, no, it doesn't have anything saying what it is. But they were from the same person, so I'm taking a shot. At a dollar, I'll bet you there'll be something in either one of these. I almost always get 10 bucks out of these, the reels and, and the uh, cans, um, regardless of what's on it. So I got 10 bucks, you know, literally coming back out of these, just as they are, just for the canisters and, and the metal reels. Now, that's what I sell them for if, I, if the content's no good. I've never had to go that route. I always sell these for at least 10 bucks, um, no matter what. Plus, you know, 30, 40 is usually about the average on these with good content. Um, let's get these books out of the way. Um, doesn't look like much you know I even look at these dirty dingy books with you know the marks on them I knew the title I knew who, who it is and I'll tell you I'm sure you'll recognize the name um, it's Edgar Rice Burroughs the Tarzan creator and this is the land that time forgot they've made a movie out of it two or three times land of the lost as far as I'm concerned is based on this um, you know literally this one here this is a first edition uh, and even in this condition, I paid a dollar for it. It's still worth 40 bucks or so. Um, on something like this, you know, it's a nice early one. You have to know some of your sci-fi to know something about some of these items. At least know who Edgar Rice Burroughs is. On telling something like this, usually how to tell if th this is a first edition, it's going to say copyright. And this is for any book, really, that I see the early ones. This usually gives it away really quickly. It's copyright Edgar Rice Burroughs, Inc., 1924. And once it says that date, if you see underneath that published like a date, like this one says published June 1924, those two correspond. That is a first edition, and you can look that up on a lot of titles like this. If it has the date in there twice, like it says, you know, 1924, and then said says published on a certain date in 1924, those are usually first editions, even if it doesn't state it. I've looked this one up. I've had this one before. I've had this one two or three times because this is one that a lot of people will have and you know, a state sale on their bookshelves and not think much of it. They don't usually look through these there. There's no barcodes. So a lot of the scanner people that come in for FBA miss these all the time. Um, it's a good one for my dollar. I'm going to get a good return on my investment, at least a $30 profit on this one. And this one here, I don't remember who it was. I'm actually going to have to look into what it says on here. Uh, this is a 1907. This is by the Hearst Foundation, Hearst and Company. It's John Greenleaf Whittier. It's a snowbound a book of poems. Now this is an early one, not worth a ton of money, but for another dollar, um, I sell a lot of these and they usually sell pretty quickly. Um, and on these, I paid a dollar for it. I'll probably get like 10, 15 bucks for it easy. Stuff like this is just, you know, set it down, take two or three pictures, and it takes just a couple minutes to list. I don't mind buying cheaper stuff if it only takes moments to list. If it's a quick list, I'll buy the cheaper items and I'll buy them all day long. Um, I've got like a flip book here. Uh, I don't know who this is. I think he writes um, or does like uh, how to animate books. Hal Cooper. I, I'm, I know the name. I, I can't say for sure. I'll probably have to look this one up a little better. But it's a little flip book, probably from the 30s. Any of these little flip books get like 8 10 bucks, no matter what. The better ones, Disney, I've sold for 30 40 bucks or better. I don't know about this one. Uh, let's see here. Um, these are in there, and I talk about what is paper. Paper is anything that's literally paper items like this. This is a... Uh, um, like the paperwork and the warranty card for a specific doll. 
um, and it's babies hungry and it's I've got two of them so I don't know if this came from you know uh, um, you know manufacturers overrun or somebody had a couple of them a store but this is you know literally has the string and everything still on it like it's never been issued um, pretty neat item I got a dollar into the two of these I'm probably gonna put these up for like 10 bucks a piece I could not even find this doll for sale on eBay at all so you know I don't maybe I've got the name wrong but I would imagine the name is baby's hungry um, usually that's the way they do these um, but these you know 20 bucks I'll probably get back on these two right here that's just another oddball paper item um, this is the Delaware and Hudson Company. This is a railroad booklet. Uh, stuff like this is another, you know, what I would consider a good paper item. It's got a map on it, and that's usually what you want to find. The ones with maps, route maps on it. This is like 14 15 bucks. These are my 50 cent item here. Um, General Motors, we, I talked about uh, World's Fair items. This is General Mi uh, Motors from the World's Fair, I believe, uh, yeah, the Chicago 1933. 50 cents, uh, you know, I'll probably get 10 15 bucks out of it. Uh, another one from the fair. It's got a picture of the fair building on it too. Eight bucks is what I'll probably get out of this one. So you know, not everyone goes for a ton of money, but for fifty cents, two or three pictures. It takes you know, I'll have three minutes in a listing at you know max, and it'll be out the door. Um, this is Toledo Choir Society, nineteen twenty-four, their second concert. Um, no idea what this is worth. Um, I'll probably put like seventeen fifty or twenty-four fifty on it. I bet you I'll sell for ten or fifteen. This stuff always goes like that. Now this is a bolo all day long. I talk about hardware just like the doorbell. Any of that stuff's a bolo. Um, I don't look for oddball stuff. This is one of the Goodwills. I said I haven't been to one. I just went to one the other day. I said let's take a shot at it. Um, it's got the chains and the actual marked. Uh, this is Hamilton Bay. Now I'll chain these up and make uh, like four of these since I have the chain sets with them. And uh, these will sell very well. I get like 10 bucks a piece for any of these chain pulls with the chains. And if I, again, if I have to buy a new chain for it, I'll go ahead and do it um, because these are cheap. I can run into these too at, you know, thrift stores and flea markets too. So I'll throw these together. I've got uh, two bucks into them. Goodwill uh, labels on them. And I think I might have paid half price. I'm not sure. It's been a few days. Um, but again, these are like 10 bucks a piece once you have the chains on them. I don't care if they're in the package or not. Replacement pull chains for for ceiling fans always go so you know good bolo in my book you know even at two dollars for the investment if that's what I paid for it you know there's 40 bucks coming back out of it you know I may have to sink you know a dollar or two into some more of these little chains but you know who cares you know I'll still even at you know a three or four dollar investment in these I'm still gonna make at least 30 bucks back so good bolo um, you know and some of these I might just sell them as a lot because he actually bought whoever this was bought more parts to it too so you know good item good bolo Let's do the postcards real quick here um, before I get into a few other things. Now, people wonder about the postcards, what not to buy. This is a large size, four by six. This is the small size. This is a three and a half by five and a half. These are the size you want. Don't buy the big ones unless you, you're really sure it's worth something. There are some big ones that are worth money like this. You saw some of the, the California ones from the Placerville area that I do sell. And some of those are large. They're from the 50s too. This is probably... Um, actually, Ansel Adams, if you know who that is, but um, I bought it just because it was Ansel. I've got, a, a, I don't know, maybe eight or ten of these in a big lot that I bought. And a lot of these will sell just because it's Ansel Adams. So, um, you know, I'll still get some money out of them. But for the most part, do not buy this size. Now, people talked about what um, folder uh, postcards are. There's different kinds of folders, and they're not all folders technically. Like this one here is a like a booklet but what it is is a booklet of more postcards literally you tear these out of the booklet and you'd uh be able to mail each one off individually i think yeah there's one that's loose here so you know that's literally what you get out of these these sell to the individuals or the book the whole book is actually here i counted them made sure everything's here um I, normally i wouldn't mess with uh, los angeles because they made so many of them but these booklets you can still get 10 bucks out of i paid a dollar for this one as well so even the booklets, you can get a dollar. People just think it's sold as a, as a lot, you know, one item. But you can tear these all apart, no big deal, and just sell them individually in some cases. Now, I'm going to show you some folder folders as well and why they're folders and why this technically is not a folder. This is like a souvenir postcard booklet is what I would call it. Now, this is a folder here. This is um, the Stump House. Now, this is in Eureka, California. The only reason I bought a folder card, uh, anything California. Now, the Stump House is literally a stump that fell or was was felled and um, it turned into a restaurant. 
Now this these touristy stuff goes very well. Now the the stump house itself isn't worth a lot of money, but this is a folder card I've never seen. Can't find another one, and it's called a folder card because it unfolds and you know it folds back up. But it's got items made out of the wood from the stump house in it, and it's got redwood, you know, burl wood and things like that. This is an advertising piece too. The stump house sold. Uh, tourist items, you know, carved wood bowls and burrow wood items, and there's some artistry into the items in here, so this is actually, you know, from a, a very nice uh, place, so this one's probably going to be worth, you know, 15, 20 bucks minimum. I'll have to look this up, though, and see if I can't track down from some other site besides eBay something similar, but again, California, it's a good item, it's a tourist item, 1920s, um, good all the way around. Um, and along that, here, here is Monterey, the peninsula. There is a big golf course in here. It's the Santa Barbara area out towards Santa Barbara. This is another folder card, 1920s. Um, it's got nice street scenes in it. You know, to sell this, I'd like show a zoom in on just one of the street scenes in the folder. Don't show the outside of the folder. As a general rule, I don't. And I actually got three of these for a dollar a piece. Um, you know, they're at least ten bucks each. No way they're not. This will just be a you know a one listing. You know, with quantity of three, quick, easy one. Um, you know, again, ten bucks a piece, three bucks. I'll get thirty bucks back minimum. I'm probably estimating I'll probably put thirty-four fifty and might even get twenty bucks a piece for these. So, you know, good, good, good investment on my my purchase. Another one, Lake Tahoe again, folder card. This is a different era. These are twenties, nineteen ten, nineteen twenty. This is thirties and forties. And you can tell they're the linen style. Um, the same thing. They all fold out. That's a folder one. Again, typical folder. I only buy, you know, certain ones, Tahoe ones I always buy. Disney ones now, again, another folder. They're all folders. Every one I'm showing you is some sort of folder or booklet. Um, Disney ones don't go for a ton of money, but I got a bunch of these, so I'm going to put them in a lot. And I will get, you know, say four bucks a piece in a lot if I sell just Disney, just the same era. Disneyland 1950, 62-ish, that's when this was made. Um, but there's other types that, you know, people call folders that are more like the booklets too, like the Los Angeles one I showed you. Universal Studios, I do sell vintage ones. I don't know if there was a date. 1979, this is an original earlier one. And same with this one here. And it's, you know, just individual postcards you can tear out. And these are literally, um, they've got like a stub, so you know who you sent it to as well, too, on this. So it's just a standard size, three and a half by a five and a half postcard, but it folds and it's got like a, a fold line on it. These do sell if they're from the right place. Universal Studios will sell. I'll put the two together. These were 50 cents though. I only paid 50 cents a piece for these because they're not as popular and people just usually price them less than some of the other ones. But for these two, I'll get 14, 15 bucks easy. And then I got some other ones that are, uh, well, here's a Monterey one too. Monterey, again, you, you got to know something about areas. This is like new old stock. It's still crisp. You can hear that noise from it. Never been opened. Um, but when they get like this, don't just pry them open. Sit here and bend them around. I see them and I do get them like this where they're stuck together from age. It just has something to do with the printing on these. But just fan them out like that and then they're pretty much fine. Again, you, you'll see them like that. That's just something with paper. Don't freak out if you see them like that and you're afraid. You're afraid of them. Bend them around like that. You'll hear it creak, uh, crease and then you'll be able to sell them. Again, these are more of the Disney ones here. Uh, each one of the individual parks, Haunted Mansion's on the back of this one, so this one's good. Tomorrowland, uh, Adventureland, Fantasyland, Frontierland. I got the whole set. So on these, 50 cents a piece, I got 250 into a whole set of them. I'll probably get 20 bucks out of those sets. So that just gives you an idea on what they are. Um, I'm not going to show close-ups today. Um, we're just going to go off and show you these. I'm going to be putting some more videos on some uh, close-ups and some uh, centering it on certain items. I'm going to show you some sheet music today, but I will have another video just on sheet music um, and nothing else. So just so you can give an idea, I run into sheet music all the time. Church sales are always the best for sheet music. Church sales are the best, number one. And number two for, for uh, sheet music is a local live estate auction or a local live auction. Um, this one here is another one. This is a pen craft. This is a solid brass and metal uh, cannon. You know, I paid 50 cents or a dollar for it. Something like this I'll probably put maybe in Civil War section or in the, um, the toy section. I'll probably get 10 bucks for it, maybe more than that even. I haven't sold one of these in a little, little while. It's very accurate. This thing weighs, you know, like half a pound on its own. So it's a good item. I've talked about jewelry and stuff here. Um, tags on it. I paid $1.50 for it. 
Uh, this is literally like a um, tribal piece. It's brass. It's got wood discs across it. This is mod, mid-century, 1950s. Um, I paid, as I said, $1.50 for this. I'll probably get, say, 15 or 20 bucks out of this. Every one of this type, these tribal wooden ones, always sells. This is the one type that I can tell you, if you see it at a sale, the chunkier, the bigger, the gaudier, the better. If this was even bigger, it would sell quicker and for more money. You know, if it was more chunky wood, animals on it, anything like that. Every single one of these tribal looking ones I sell. Every one. So this is a bolo all day long. If you want to know what kind of jewelry to look for, tribal wooden beads, bone beads, bovine, any of that stuff sells, especially if it's a mix of brass. And it has age to it. This has good age to it. This is a good piece. Uh, and I didn't get a ton of jewelry this week. I maybe all together got like 30 or 40 pieces of good costume jewelry. Um, some weeks I get hundreds of them, you know. It just depends on, on how the auctions are going and how my pickers happen to be. Now this one is marked. I've had one almost identical to, to this not too long ago. It's a 1955 uh, Hobie, H-O-B-E, and it's just loaded with, with rhinestones on it. Um, nice piece. They're a mix of amber and like... Um, I don't know, almost a chocolatey color of them. Um, very nice piece. Again, this was a dollar. Uh, I think this was a dollar fifty-two actually. But this here, I'll probably put thirty-four fifty on it. I wouldn't doubt I took seventeen fifty because most of these gaudy ones like this seventeen fifty. And these I get all the time. I've had a couple of these. I may have even showed something similar to these. These are charm bracelets, and when they have kids, what you do back in the 40s and 50s, and these all have like 1950s and 40s dates on them. It's all 12 karat gold filled. Nice early piece. These little heads are like, uh, have the kid's birthday on them, and it says their first name on them. And this is a charm bracelet. Something like this, I usually get like 17, 18 bucks out of it. Again, this was 50 cents because it's missing the clasp. And this comes into play on fixing these things and some of the tools, again, I use. I'm just going to put a new one of these on there because I do save all these broken, you know, little clasps and C-clasps and all of those items from broken jewelry. I've got a big bin. One of these totes I have full of just broken jewelry parts to repair stuff like this. So when you buy these big lots of jewelry, save some of that out and save it. Just like the screws from vintage toys and appliances and things, I save those. Those do sell on their own as well, too. Uh, let's see here. Here's an Art Coon company. It's a machining company from the local area. It's an aluminum 1950s tape measure, you know, 10, 15 bucks. Pens I talk about. This is a Cherry Grove Dairy Company. This is a local one. Um, looking at the number, the phone number is Pontiac 3443. That's literally the phone number. So if you see numbers written like that, it's a good one. 30s, 40s, 50-ish. This pen, a dollar. Um, it's nice brass in, in Bakelite. It's a real nice pen, actually. Um, I'll probably get, say, 20 bucks for this, maybe. 1750 minimum. Is, that's my lowest I'd probably put on this. Um, I got some charms, uh, Cracker Jacks, and some uh, oddball stuff. There's actually a metal Cracker Jack um, angel cherub in here. Now that's going to sell for ten or fifteen. Uh, this little bag was a dollar, you know. So, and I buy these little bags in bulk so I can bag them up like this. These are bags that I own. Um, I buy them by the thousands just to put stuff in like this. Uh, but these little charms, you know, I got nothing into it. A dollar. Uh, there's a circus charm in here. It's a metallicized plastic from Cracker Jack. You know, that's eight bucks. There's a, a flicker ring with smile and a smiley face. That's eight bucks. You know, this little bag, I'm going to get like 25 bucks minimum. That little Cupid metal one might go for 20 on its own. So who knows? But I'm at least 20 bucks. No question about it. Um, and then little tiny pins and buttons. There's a Royal Coronation uh, nice uh, officer's button in here from one of the, uh, the Beef Eater uh, uniformed soldiers. Um, just a little bit of oddball stuff, these pins here. This is the kind of stuff I look for. Um, but these buttons should all do very well. There's a lot of stuff in here. Again, these are one of those bags you find on the counter um, at a Goodwill next to the like sunglasses and those little baskets. Um, but let's move on to some other items here. Um, these are like sticker books. You know, it comes with paper dolls in them. And actually, um, this is a pretty decent one here. This is Pepper Tammy's uh, little sister. Now, Tammy is a doll line from the 60s, 50s, and 60s. I'm going to put $27.50 on it. It's just a sticker book with like some activities and things. Somebody's used it, but they're still worth some money here. Same thing. This is another sticker fun book, Santa Claus. I'm going to put 20 bucks on this one. Now this is the best one here. This is the Munsters. Now if you're not familiar with the Munsters, you need to look it up. Anything with the Munsters usually sells and sells very well. Even colored in, uh, coloring books I've gotten 20 30 bucks for. Now this sticker fun book, I can't find a single other one for sale. I'm going to put 75 bucks on it. 
I got a uh, dollar in each one of these items I'm showing you right here. Um, Bridal Dolls, now I'm put $24.50. This is an oddball one by Watkins Strathmore, the paper company. So this is a pretty decent one. Again, a dollar a piece on these. Um, here's another set. These are two different uh, identical ones, two copies of the same one. I'm going to put them as a lot for $24.50. They're all there. When you buy these, make sure they're all there. If the dolls are good, you're usually pretty safe to buy them for a dollar or so. And then here's Mary Poppins. All the dolls are there and, you know, the whole works. It's got, you know, the holder for it, which is her purse and things like that. Some of them aren't even punched out. So, you know, that's a better plus on them when you see them where they have the, the sheets still inside unpunched out. But that's a pretty decent one. Um, but that is that. And let's move on to some sheet music. As I said, sheet music, I'm going to be doing a special video just on sheet music. Um, and let me throw this out there too. I said in yesterday's video, if anybody wants a critique of their store for free, I'm going to do one random person. I'll pick somebody down below in the comment section. If you want me to critique your store, please put that in there and put your store name. Um, you can't be shy if you're going to have me critique it because I'm going to show it in a video. I'll pick somebody, I'll announce it, and then in a couple days I'll have a video up of that critique of your store. And we're going to go from there. I'm going to try and do one of those a month, you know, free. I'm not looking to make money off of anybody that way. So I'll do some critiques and I'll tell you what I think of your store. Um, I'm going to be blunt and, and to the point. You want to make money. If you want to be straight and have, you know, what it's going to take you to get to that money, you listen to it and go from there. Um, but again, put your uh, store name down below if you want, and we will go from there. If you're a little shy in putting it out right now, um, you can... Uh, email me through YouTube while they're still available. So, um, But on to sheet music here, um, there's different kinds of sheet music. Now this is an entire um, orchestra's worth of sheet music. It's got every position on here, the brass, the trumpets, everything. Now these go very well. I pay a dollar for these just like I do any other ones. This one here I'm probably going to get, you know, like 30 or 40 bucks for. It's a jazz foxtrot, real good one. Again, dollar a piece. I didn't know who it was. I don't know much about this one, but all these multiple instrument sheet music sets go very well. It's like the whole uh, group of, of instruments, so it plays the entire song by every point you can imagine. So for all those jazz bands who have like eight, ten pieces, this has all the sheets in it. So um, again, I'll have to look these up specifically, and maybe I won't find anything like this, but I'll ballpark them thirty-four fifty on something like that. Soul sheet music, this is Blue Magic. Any of the Soul ones, Jackson 5, any of the, like the, the Cadillacs or anything like that, all that stuff sells. The coasters, I sell all the 50s music, 60s music, and this one's uh, late 60s, early 70s. This is like a $50 one. Uh, they sell all the time. You can see comps on this one here. Livia Newton-John, $34.50. She's fairly scarce to find, believe it or not. Xanadu, the book set, the book of all the music from the, uh, the Xanadu movie sells for like 100 bucks. So, you know, that's something to look for. Uh, this is Rita Hayworth. This one sells just because she's in the cover, eight, ten bucks. Abbott and Costello, No Bow to Doubt It. Now, I remember the song. Um, it was a pretty decent uh, movie. I used to watch these as a kid. I know all the Abbott and Costello movies. Um, 1750 I'm putting on. I'll at least get ten bucks. And again, I pay a dollar for each sheet. Every one of these I paid a dollar for. Floyd Kramer, Last Dance. This one always sells. You can look up comps. I'm going to put thirty four fifty on it. Probably take twenty bucks. Bob Dylan knocking on heaven's door. If he was on the cover, this would be worth more, but I'm going to put $27.50. Again, a dollar a piece. Here's three from the same uh, movie. Louis Armstrong and Danny Kay. Uh, they don't sell very good on their own, but as a lot from the same movie, I'm putting $34.50. I should at least get out of the $3 investment for these three sheets, like $20. Bucks. Peter Pan. Now on these ones here, I iron off the corners. I'll take an iron and iron the corners, flatten them all out. But these I don't list in the sheet music section. I list these in the Disney section. People buy these to frame and put on the wall on these. I'll put $17.50 on it. Two from Cinderella. I'll put the same thing, $17.50 on it. <clears throat> the Carpenters, um, close to you, $14.50. Sinatra, $14.50. Now, these are large format ones. This is, I talked about the World's Fair. This is from the 1893 Chicago World's Fair. It's Miss Columbia. You know, this is probably like a $40 or $50 one. This one is on the Old Fall River line. Now, this is a railroad one. Old Fall River Railroad line. This one's probably like a $50 or $60 one, too. Again, on something like this, you buy a couple hundred of them, you pay a dollar a piece, so you have a hundred bucks into a hundred sheets. All you need to sell is one or two for 50 bucks and you're out the door and you already made a profit. So I'm sure I'm going to make my money off of one or two of these and get all my money back on them within the first week or so. 
My Pony Boy, um, Girl with a Whip, that's a pretty good one there. The covers sell them too, the artwork and stuff. Uh, on Hollywood Shores, you know, I'm going to put like $27.50 on the ones you don't see a price tag on it. Another one, this one's pretty interesting. People frame these, as I said. Some of the artwork on here is by known people, so they sell just for the artwork. Idaho, it's a good one. These are World War I for the most part, or before. This is a World War I soldier's image on the top. This is a pretty good one. Tipperary, this is a Scotsman on the cover, 1912. I've had this one before. I'll get 10, 15 bucks. Uh, let's see here. Even in ragged condition, even if they're split in pieces, I'll put these back together, I'll iron out all the damaged pieces the best I can, um, and unfold and fix and iron, and uh, these will sell. You will see, even in the condition there, and people still play these. Um, you know, 17 bucks on that one. You know, same on this one's 27 to 34 bucks on that one. Same as that one, early ones. Uh, the prettier the cover, the better they sell. If they're patriotic, they sell to Liberty. Anything with Statue of Liberty, I always sell very high. 34.50. This one's got uh, Cupid on it, hearts the whole works. I'm probably going to put 34.50. World War One, 34.50. Again, most World War Ones aren't very good, so you got to just kind of watch out. But this is Valsenoba, and this is Zenobia Shriners. I knew it by the color, the style, and the naming. This is a $50 one as well, too. The Cookbook of Love. Now, these covers sell just because of that. Cute Angel. Um, it's really not a nice cover. $34.50. $27.50. This is a radio promo. I'm going to put $34.50. It's from a Cleveland radio station from 1924. Real good one. Jazz. Cuddle Up Blues, $27.50. I got the time, I got the place. Now this one I knew, this one's $17.50. This one should sell all day long. We're going over, the same thing here. This is $12.50, this one should sell all day long. Another cute Cupid, um, Ever Loving Blues. Jazz one here, nice one. $27.50 because of the cover artwork. Again, Patriotic, $57.50, Spirit of 76. Cute Duck, I'll see it a little better. Artwork wise. Now, some of these are by like Walter Lance and Disney artists, so I always look for those too. Even if it's not a Disney piece, some of their artists actually did these. Uh, here's another one for the honor of the USA. She's fairly famous. She's considered the American girl, uh, Gladys Clay, uh, Caverly. Um, I'm going to put $37.50 on this one for the love of the flag. This is a good one too. Uh, I'm going to put $17, I'm sorry, $34.50 on that one. A little bud of love. This is a pretty decent one. This is jazz. Nice cover early. 1750. And then the Kaiser on this one here. Nice topic. This one should sell too. 1750. Um, and then all I really got besides that, I got some records. I've got another Glenn Miller in the mood. I got a Vocal Lion, Little Johnson, and her uh, Chicago Swingers. This one's like a $75 one. And then I've talked about Glenn Miller. I've gotten four more Glenn Miller in the mood. So, and I crank those out all the time. This one's got a little tiny rim chip, so this is like a $40 disc. Again, a dollar for each record. And then I got this from Goodwill. This one I got from Goodwill. I got three of these, actually. They're vintage stained glass. $5.99 a piece. I'm going to put like 50 or 60 bucks on this minimum. So that one should be a good one. And then I got a couple oddball ones. Now these here are 10-inch uh, LP33s. This is Yankovic. This is Polka. 75 bucks a piece for Frank uh, Yankovic. Polka ones still sell. His sell very well. So he's the one exception to the rule on LPs for Polka. Always buy his. Um, but that's what I got for today. Again, I'm not going into a bunch of detail on them. I'm spending some time doing a video for you for just sheet music. So you will see that one coming up here shortly. Again, that's what I got today. If you liked the video, please hit the like button below. If you hit that bell, the bell up top, it's going to give you notifications when I post new videos or when I go live. So please hit the bell, subscribe, and tell a friend.